Five. My name is Darren Kitchen. It's your weekly dose of Technolust, and I'm going to build on last week where I proof of concepted. I say that as if it's a verb. I pocked. I pock, 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 pock. Anyway, I made an nmap payload which scans the vicinity and saves stuff to your packet squirrel to say, hey, here's your neighbors. And of course, it's just a quick and dirty payload. Um, it's not fault tolerant. It's not using best practices. It's just something I whip up like I typically tend to whip up, which is great for me, but not really something I want to share. So I figured this would be a great opportunity to get into building on that and talking about ways to make it better. Uh, so I, I would say that the like if I can pick a top five, uh, it would be first and foremost to comment, like comment the shit out of your payload and not just like comment the actual payload itself, but write a decent readme.md file because when you submit it, it's going to be something where everybody wants to be able to say like, oh, hey, what's, what does this do? Right. And what do the lights mean? So comment. Second would be make it tweakable, as tweakable as possible, meaning like if you have uh, some command line arguments or, or you know, other features of the payload that you can turn into variables, go ahead and do that. Uh, the, the nicest payloads are the ones that are well commented at the top and then right underneath, it's just a bunch of variables that then the user can tweak and nothing is hard coded. So I did that a little bit last week where I, uh, well, at least here I make the, you know, CIDR and the IP and the options um, into variables and, you know, you can go ahead and, and, you know, you can really get extensive with this, but it just basically don't hard code everything. Third would be add a little bit of error handling. So sometimes you may have a payload which requires an external dependency that's not normally available. Um, so check to see if that's available and if it's not gracefully fail. Um, you know, other things would be like checking if there's external storage, if you need external storage, and if there's not, well, fail, right? Which brings us to the fourth, which would be to, you know, kind of use the standard LED patterns to describe the states. So, for instance, if you're setting it up, use LED setup. And if you're in the middle of the attack, use LED attack or LED stage one so that anybody can glance at a payload and say, oh, okay, it's blinking yellow. It's in the first stage. It's blinking twice yellow. It's in the second stage. Um, and then that brings up the last, which was number five, to use multi, if you're gonna have multiple conditions fail gracefully, use multiple like fail one, fail two LED states. And, uh, and also, you know, echo out a log. That's super helpful for debugging because if, you know, you're gonna share a payload, somebody comes into it and they're like, never used your payload. They're not the author of it and something's gonna fail. It's always nice uh, if there's like a little error log. So with all of that said, you know, and, and in traditional programming fashion, I'm gonna give you, um, I'd say best practice zero, which is before you go making your extensive Nmap payload, check the Hack5 forums, check the GitHub, make sure it hasn't been done. Because while I was about to go into like prettying up this payload from last time, which, you know, I eh, could use some work, right? Um, I mean, at the very least, check for the existence of USB storage for your packet squirrel before you start attempting to log files there because otherwise it's just not going to go anywhere. Uh, I should have at very least used this little snippet here, which basically says, hey, if uh, this no mount file uh, doesn't exist, which will exist if there's no USB drive mounted, then you can go ahead and save files there. And if not, well, then LED fail, right? And then you know, like, hey, it's not doing anything because you don't have a th flash drive plugged in. So while perusing the Hack5 GitHub, I came across this particular payload. It's called Nmap Dump. It is from InfoScrimmish, which is actually a pretty cool website. InfoScrimmish says, a society is only as free as their ability to freely share ideas. I totally agree. And this is a great example of uh, a payload that matches all of that criteria that I just mentioned. And I've got it pulled up over here. Let's take a look. So it starts off with, uh, a lot of great information here in the comments and it tells you what the LEDs do and then everything is defined in these variables and then next to each variable is you know some examples of what happens here so for instance you know uh, the net sleep is the seconds to sleep while waiting for NAT meaning like waiting for NAT to get an IP address right 
uh, the mode transparent and then next to it it says you can you know use transparent or bridge or NAT or VPN or none and then what none actually means as well as you know what you want to do at the end of this you can either you know reboot or halt or do nothing at the end of the payload as well as where to save the files and the file naming scheme so I would say like very well documented, uh, very tweakable because all those options are at the top. And when we go through and actually look at this payload, uh, it has those graceful errors. So for instance, down here, this is actually a function. Uh, you know what, this is a pretty cool thing here in Notepad++. I can actually just reduce that whole function, boop. And that's the finish function, which does a little bit of cleanup work. Here is the run function. And then so really the payload starts here, which is first to check if we have USB storage. See, simply uh, commented there. And if it is ready to go, then we can go ahead and LED attack and go ahead and run the run function. Um, otherwise, we LED fail because there's no external storage. So just as I had mentioned before. So what does that run payload actually do? Well, here's the thing. Wow, I thought mine was like quick and dirty. This is, this is a very complex uh, way to go about doing all of these things, but it's pretty cool. I got to give the author a lot of cred here. It will choose your preference of which net mode to use. It will log the output of if config to a log file for debugging, just like I had mentioned another great best practice. It does a LED W very fast. So that's, that's not really a standard LED value. It would be like LED stage one or LED attack would be a standard one. Um, but white very fast, hey, I mean, as long as it's spelled out clearly in the documentation, who cares, right? So at this point, what it does is uses IP to figure out what the link is. And then it goes through a huge section here to figure out you know, the best IP address to use and you know, as opposed to mine, which just hard codes to ETH1. The rest of it is actually doing a little bit of checking and has IP6 support, which is great. And then finally, we actually get down to the point where we do the scanning. Now, of course, all of these Nmap options could have as well been variables at the top. Um, and there's a couple other nuances here that I might have done a little differently. Like the subnet section here automatically assumes it's going to be a slash 24, whereas I think my example there just went ahead and used whatever I was actually getting from the IP command. I think that might be a better way to do it. But still, this is the beauty of this also being a open source payload. Anybody can get in here and make a modification and, and commit it to our GitHub. So that's good stuff. So I just wanted to point out those best practices and this payload from InfoSkirmish. You can actually check out InfoSkirmish.com. This is the author. And I've gone ahead and contacted the author uh, to let him know like, hey, thanks for contributing. And I'm going to send a hackshop.com gift certificate. Um, and the, one of the difficulties with that is there's no good way to get contact info out of people that commit on GitHub. So I've gone ahead and set up hackfi.org slash payload. So if you want to have your payload featured, then you can go ahead and link it there and then it'll be in the queue and I'll be able to take a look at it. And if I feature it, I'll send you an awesome gift certificate as well. And then I don't have to go and hunt down everybody's stuff through GitHub APIs and Maltegoing you. So with all that said, I'm Darren Kitchen. I will see you guys next week. Until then, trust your technolust. If you've got a great idea, bring it to the web the way we do and head over to domain.com. I can't tell you how many times their domain discovery system has helped me find the perfect name and their quick and easy checkout process means it's online in no time flat. And get this, the guys over at domain.com have been supporting Hack5 for years and they want to hook you up. Get 20% off at checkout at domain.com with the coupon code HAK5 and send your thanks over on Twitter at domain.com. So when you think domain names, think domain.com.